Enjoy a narrated brief tour through the interwar years section of the Smithsonian's Air and Space Museum's Udvar Hazi Center. This tour features both civilian and military aircraft that were built between the wars. The museum is free to visit and is located in Chantilly, Virginia, outside of Washington, D.C. The museum's Huffdalen Duster is one of 18 airplanes specifically designed to apply a new method of controlling agricultural insect pests, aerial crop dusting. In addition, the Duster was the first aircraft to be used by the forerunner of Delta Airlines. The remains of two of the original 14 Dusters stayed in storage until 1967 when Delta selected one of them for restoration. In a formal ceremony on January 18, 1968, Delta dignitaries officially donated the airplane to the National Air and Space Museum. On April 17, 1926, Western Air Service commenced operation flying the Contract Air Mail Route 4 between Los Angeles and Salt Lake City. Western selected the Douglas M-2 aircraft to serve this route, a mail plane version of the O-2 observation plane with the provision to carry a passenger instead of mail in the front cockpit. The National Air and Space Museum's M-2 is believed to be the last Douglas mail plane in existence. The Aranka C-2 was the first truly light airplane certified by the Bureau of Aeronautics and produced in substantial numbers in the United States. Safe, economical, and easy to fly, this delightful but unassuming monoplane changed the face of aviation by opening a market never before successfully tapped, that of private aircraft ownership. Before the Aranka C-2, there was almost no private ownership because the open cockpit biplanes had to work to earn their keep. They were economical at one cent a mile for oil and gas, and they could often be rented for just four dollars an hour. Furthermore, they were simple to fly, easy to maintain, and had no bad characteristics to spring on a novice pilot. The Pepsi Skyrider is one of more than 1,200 travel air open cockpit biplanes built between 1925 and 1930. They were popular in rugged aircraft that earned their keep as utility and record-breaking workhorses and saw service around the country as crop dusters, barnstormers, and as private planes for the sportsman pilot. For 40 years, pilots flew the Pepsi Skyrider across the United States for the Pepsi-Cola company delivering a unique form of advertising known as skywriting. The Aerosport A260 biplane is a rare example of an alternative design depression era airplane that complements the museum's conventional tandem open cockpit biplanes of that same era. Its side by side dual control cockpit arrangement offered a different cockpit configuration. It sold at the factory for between $2,900 and $3,485. The side by side seating, the vision from the cockpit, and the dual controls made it an excellent trainer aircraft. The Fairchild FC-2 series cabin monoplane was developed for aerial photographic use and was an immediate hit with bush pilots, utility operators, and fledgling airline services. It was included as an all-purpose aircraft for Lt. Commander Richard Byrd's South Pole Expedition. The stars and stripes proved to be sturdy and practical, providing a steady platform for thousands of aerial photographs of new unexplored terrain. This Fleet Model 2 was a primary flight trainer at the Roosevelt Aviation School on Long Island in New York, one of the leading civilian aviation schools in the U.S. in the 1930s. When all civilian flight training was prohibited east of the Susquehanna River in 1942 due to the onset of World War II, Howard Ayler bought this and five other fleets and moved them to Bloomsburg Airport. Students continued to fly the fleet as part of the civilian pilot training program, a government-funded instruction program for potential military pilots prior to and during World War II. The fleet is now the only aircraft in the museum's collection to have an official CPTP history. The Kreider Reisner C-4C Challenger was part of a family of biplanes developed to satisfy the need for a lighter and more efficient all-around aircraft that would replace aging jennies and standards from the immediate post-World War I era. The airplane established a solid reputation as an efficient and reliable performer that flew exceptionally well and had no bad habits. The C-4C was also popular as an air taxi and as a sport aircraft. The Verbal Sperry Messenger, 
the smallest manned aircraft ever used by the United States Army, was designed as the aerial equivalent of an Army dispatch motorcycle, landing in small clearings as well as in forward areas to deliver and pick up messages from field commanders. It was rugged, structurally simple, and cost only $4,000 per airplane. The San Francisco was one of five loaning OA-1As that participated in the historic Pan American Goodwill Flight of 1926 and 1927. To stimulate public interest, each of the five was named after a major U.S. city. This flight was made to improve relations with Latin American countries, to encourage commercial aviation, and to provide valuable training for Army personnel. The San Francisco was transferred to the Smithsonian Institution by the War Department in December 1927 and was restored by the National Air and Space Museum in 1964 and 65. Boeing's FB-5 Hawk was the Navy's first fighter intended specifically for carrier operation. This Hawk, serial number A7114, saw service with the Navy and the Marine Corps. Restoration of the airplane was performed in 1977 and 78 by the U.S. Marine Corps Aviation Museum in Quantico, Virginia. Curtis's F-9C2 Sparrowhawks operated from U.S. Navy airships during the early 1930s, testing one of the more imaginative ideas in aviation history. They were deployed with the USS Akron and Macon, turning these airships, blimps, into flying aircraft carriers. Adapting the recently developed concept of the aircraft carrier, airplanes mounted directly to the airships could be used for attack, for defense of the airships, and to greatly increase the search range. The Navy's experimental trials with airship-based fighter support were brief due to the loss of both the Akron and the Macon. With no dirigible from which to operate, the aircraft were relegated to utility flying, but were not well liked by the pilots who flew them. Boeing's P-26 Pea Shooter was a turning point in military aircraft design, introducing the concept of the high-performance, all-metal monoplane fighter. It retained features of its predecessors, it was the last open cockpit fighter accepted by the U.S. Army Air Corps and the last with a fixed landing gear and external wing bracing. It served as America's first line of air defense in the mid to late 1930s. The airplane was restored by the U.S. Air Force for the Smithsonian and was displayed at the U.S. Air Force Museum in Dayton, Ohio until 1975, then the airplane was brought to the Smithsonian in Washington, D.C. I hope you enjoyed this narrated virtual tour of interwar aircraft displayed in the National Air and Space Museum. If you would like to tour other aircraft in this series, you will find convenient links in the description section below this video. Here are YouTube suggested links on a similar topic that you may enjoy viewing.